So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today's WasteWise Education webinar. This webinar series is um, this time we are focusing on South Asian context. And then this webinar is organized by WasteWise Cities together with ISWA YPG Educational Working Group. Today we invited uh, pre prominent speakers from uh, different organizations and then I hope all of the participants can enjoy the webinar. Thank you. <laughs> or can I go to my presentation first? Yeah, I think that, that we can do that. OK, thank you very much. So before we start the webinar, the actual presentation, let me introduce UN Habitat Waste Management Initiatives. Let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah. In the presentation mode? Yeah, it, it works. OK, so. OK, thank you very much. So, um, so I will introduce WasteWise Cities of, WasteWise Cities program of UN Habitat. So before diving into our waste management initiative, I would like to talk about the current global situation on waste management. So at currently, currently 2 billion people are living without waste collection system and then 3 billion are without access to controlled waste disposal facilities. Also, if we continue this business as, business as user activities in our daily life, it is said that from 8 to 10 percent of greenhouse gas emissions are coming from waste management sector in the world. On top of that, every single year, um, sorry, this is no more, no longer than eight, but the most updated data says 11 million tons of plastic are found in its way into the world's oceans. So to tackle these waste management challenges, UN Habitat launched, launched Waste Wise Cities program in 2018 as a global call for actions of appropriate waste management and improved municipal solid waste management system. Currently, more than 203 cities across the globe joined in the Waste Wise Cities and also from private sector. Um, more than 60 organizations such as private companies, NGOs, academias, civil associations, and so on and so on. Uh, they are registered as, registered as affiliates. And then more than half of these stakeholders of waste wise cities are from Africa region. However, the second largest is from Asia and the Pacific region. This is the action area of waste-wise cities. The objective of the waste-wise cities is to enhance waste management and resource efficiency in the world's cities by uh, decreasing waste generation, improving municipal solid waste collection and control management, also increasing recycling of suitable materials and enhancing management of hazardous waste. To achieve these goals, objectives of waste wise cities we have four action areas first one is knowledge and good practice sharing um, through interactive knowledge have website we also issue newsletters and then the second action area is waste data and monitoring and the, this action area UN Habitat developed the waste wise cities uh, waste wise cities tool which is a uh, monitoring methodology of SDG indicator 11.6.1. And then the third one is advocacy and education. 
we are basically um, promoting awareness, awareness raising events or something like the campaigns. And then the final one is project finance and bankability support. This webinar is under the third action area, advocacy and education. So Westwise Cities highlights three waste related SDGs, which are goal 11, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. Goal 12, ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. And then goal 14, conserve and sustain, su sustainably use the ocean seas and marine resources for sustainable development. More details is here. Um, as a custodian agency of SDG 11, UN Habitat is focusing on target 11.6 for, for waste management and its indicator 11.6.1 is the key indicator for the waste management, which is proportion of municipal solid waste collected and managed in controlled facilities with regards to the total waste generated by the city. In addition to this, the 11, 11 we also focus on 12.3, which is for food waste, 12.4, hazardous waste, 12.5 national recycling land, national recycling late, and then go um, 14.1, which is for marine litter and plastic pollution. So coming back to waste waste education, UN Habitat collected innovative educational waste management program in 2020 from all over the world, and then 19 best innovative practices were selected then um, together with ISWA YPZ Education Working Group, we created and issued fact sheets of them. You can find this all of uh, the fact sheets on our website. Also, um, like today, Waste Wise Cities together with ISWA YPZ, we have organized this waste education series, waste education webinar series. And then the first one was focusing on Africa, and then the second one was for Latin America. Then today, uh, it's for South, South Asia, inviting four organizations who are carrying out its best practices in the region. Hope you can enjoy all the presentations and the panel discussions. Also, the Waste Wise Cities and the Israel YPG Education Working Group have been looking at the educational dimension of waste management, wishing to, to mainstream acquisition of waste literacy at pre-primary, primary, secondary, as well as higher education institutions. So we would appreciate if today's participants can share your ideas and knowledge with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shiho. It was very detailed and uh, we got to know much about the UN Habitats Initiative and also the uh, part and contribution of ISWA YPG Education Group. Um, before we deep dive into our keynote session and other speakers, uh, may I request Roland to maybe introduce ISWA YPG uh, broadly, perhaps, and maybe leave some comments about the education group as well. Yeah. Yes, sure. Uh, thank you, Shiza. Uh, let's do a quick window share. How's that? See my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Perfect. Cool. Uh, well, thanks everyone for being here. Um, it's really cool to to tackle this this challenge of, of waste literacy. So uh, thank you. You're doing a fantastic job. Um, so uh, my name is Roland. I'm the chair of the Young Professionals Group at ISWA. Uh, so let's uh, quickly find out exactly what that means. So ISWA, as you can see on the screen, is the International Solid Waste Association. So ISWA tries to um, collect people from all around the world and kind of implement this, the thinking of uh, think global, act local. So, you know, it, it's important to, to tackle challenges um, with local expertise. And ISWA tries to feed base practices down and take many learnings uh, back up and then the cycle goes on to continue. Uh, the young professionals group within ISWA, we are a group of under 35s um, 
in all parts of the solid waste industry, from academia to consulting to industry. And our, our, our primary objective, uh, amongst many, is, 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 to, is to connect people and, and have the important conversations that need to take place to, to make the world a better place. Um, right now, we have over 100 members from 45 countries around the world. Um, uh, this uh, little pie chart shows you uh, what kind of members they are. Um, I'm sure you can understand what a student member is. An online member is actually just our, our lower price point for members. And then almost half of our members are actually nominated by the companies or institutions that they work for. Um, we have uh, a bunch of working groups. Uh, this is our kind of um, strategy or method to, to divide tasks and make sure we get our work done. Um, I'd like to kind of today call out um, Shaza, Barbara and Adeline um, from, our, from our working groups for, for the beautiful collaboration that, that, that's taking place today. So thank you three. A um, little bit more about, uh, about the education group. As you can see in, in, in the case of today, we, we have kind of three working groups um, collaborating and working together. And uh, just so you guys are all aware, we, we, we are working on, on webinars from other uh, regions on the, around the world. But of course, it's, it's really exciting to, to have a focus on South, South Asia, which uh, I think we all know deserves um, you know, a lot more effort to, to, to solve the challenges. Um, and of course, uh, there's the development of, of educational resources for schools. Um, just like, uh, just like what was mentioned by the speaker before me, it's so important to get that waste literacy going early on. So uh, keep, keep, keep up to date with our activities and um, we'll do our best to keep you informed. Uh, I thought I'd also mention a little bit about our, our, our regional networks. I know Shiza and Ashish have collaborated really well on, on this event today. Um, but uh, yeah, we also have um, the opportunities for, for people all around the world to, to join one of our regional networks. Um, well done to, to Ashish for getting the poll started, one of our new ones. And then we also recently launched Spain and Germany. And um, hopefully in the not too far future, we'll also have some uh, groups from Norway and Italy. Um, I just thought I'd give you guys a, a couple of things you could do if you'd like to be a bit more involved. Um, you can join our LinkedIn group. Um, I'll actually share a link to that in the in the chat just after I stop speaking. Um, that you don't need to be a, an ESO member to join that. Everybody's welcome. Uh, the same in your local chapter. You don't actually have to be an ESO member to to join that. If you feel like getting involved, then um, then I'm sure your your time and effort would be greatly appreciated. Um, also, you have the choice to, to join one of our, our working groups within, within the YPG. Um, there's awesome people doing, doing really great things. So uh, if, you, if you'd like to practice a, an existing skill, acquire a new skill, or just collaborate and meet some interesting people around the world, then perhaps that's, that's for you as well. Um, and then I just wanted to end by uh, really giving a, a big thanks to all the, all the organizations who've, who've collaborated here today. Um, it's an amazing effort. And of course, as we all know, um, things, things get solved a lot better and faster in a team. So thanks everyone for being here and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, thank you, Rowan. That was a very nice introduction and thank you for all the kind remarks. Um, uh, for all the participants, we have uh, also input some of the information within the comments, so feel free to check it out. Um, for today's agenda, we we will have uh, one keynote session for you, and then we will move forward with uh, some of the best practices that Shiho has explained. So for uh, for today, uh, we have four best practices representative with us. Uh, we will move forward with them later on, and in the last session, we will have uh, four key speakers uh, to participate in panel discussion, uh, all based on the surrounding theme on waste wise education uh, for today's setup. Just to move forward with our keynote session today, just to set up the broader theme for our today's webinar, we have Mahesh Pardhan for us to deliver the keynote session. Um, Mr. Mahesh Pardhan is uh, currently a coordinator uh, at the body of the seas in East Asia, uh, maybe known as COBSEA. Maybe uh, you can also input your link therein. 
and he is responsible for the nutrient management of the global partnership uh, on nutrient management from the United Nations Environmental Program. Mahesh has also very rich experience in environment and uh, waste education, uh, on which we happy will be presenting today's key session and key lecture. Mahesh, the floor is all yours. Okay, just making sure you can see my slides and and hear me. Okay. Yeah, everything is perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that introduction. And um, Roland, I wasn't aware of this young professional group. I've been to a couple of uh, ISWA conferences, but I'm really happy to note that this has been in existence. Um, it's really good. So greetings everyone in South Asia. I think we have about 50 participants overall, including speakers on the call of the 150 that have registered. Um, it's really good that you can spend some time today. I wanted to give you sort of an overview uh, of some of the key challenges before we get down into the details of this waste wise education webinar. And this is where last year uh, we had our UN Secretary General launch a report called Making Peace with Nature. Now, uh, basically, he said humans are creating a war with nature and that we have to stop and make peace. And this is where the triple planetary crisis was mentioned. Uh, first and foremost is climate change. Second is nature and biodiversity. And the third that's very relevant to our discussions today is on pollution and waste. So if you look at the overall situation in terms of the environmental pillar based on which we have a social pillar and based on the social pillar and economic pillar. But in terms of this part where we are looking at cities and making communities sustainability uh, sustainable, sorry, there is so much of issues with the rising air, water and land pollution, of course, linked to vulnerability, etc. So basically you can see that it is quite integrated with all the other aspects and this waste cannot be looked at in isolation. But why do we manage waste? And this is where I think some of the statistics have been already mentioned. Basically, in terms of population pressures, in terms of our need for energy, water, food, etc., and how much of the planet we're putting under pressure. And we need 1.5 planets for our survival. But then in terms of the urban waste, and that is also challenged by this lack of regulatory infrastructure. Uh, where we have a lot of pressure in Africa and Asia in terms of the lower income cities where there's a lot of waste generation and in terms of people that do not have access to solid waste collection. So the statistics are very um, troubling, but then how do we manage and, and overcome this is an issue. Uh, more recently, and this is with uh, the latest United Nations Environment Assembly, UNIA, we call it, uh, where we had the fifth session uh, in March, February, end of February, March, where we have a brand new um, decision or resolution on plastics. And plastics is moving towards a new global agreement. The first open-ended working group meeting took place in Dakar, Senegal. Um, at the end of uh, May and now the negotiations will start. So by the end of 2024, um, we will have hopefully a new global agreement on plastic pollution. And as you can see, plastic is something that's very visible uh, that we are all challenged with um, in, in all our South Asian countries. But then in terms of moving forward and our traditional model, the linear model of taking, making and discarding is something that we are trying to move away from towards a circular economy uh, where we can reuse, recycle and reduce as much as possible 
um, in terms of moving towards this circular economy. And with this comes the famous waste hierarchy. I'm sure all of you are aware where the least desired option is this uncontrolled disposal down here, but then we want prevention, which is the best and ideal option in terms of minimization of waste. And this is taking forward with a life cycle assessment. Um, if you look at the different stages from production all the way to collection in terms of the key stakeholders and then the qualitative as well as quantitative prevention. Uh, you can see that education has a very key role, um, especially even out here with on the collection side, but even in terms of the elimination, the product service systems, the green purchasing, um, etc. So there's a very strong role for education in looking and strengthening the prevention aspect within the waste hierarchy. And as was mentioned, the Sustainable Development Goals 17 has waste cutting across all of them. Uh, but if you look at waste uh, goal 12 on sustainable, responsible consumption and production, there are some specific indicators as well as with the one on cities, uh, sustainable cities on 11, and then in terms of goal eight on work and economic growth. So as you can see, waste is linked across all these goals, and we just have eight more years, 2030, to meet these, challenge, these goals and indicators. And this is where environmental education comes in. Uh, where if you look at environmental education, it has a long history as far back as 72 when we first had the discussions about um, environment in Stockholm. And in fact, this year, this week, we've had the Stockholm plus 50 meeting where we're looking at progress since the first UN conference on the human environment and to see where we have gone. Environmental education was a pillar at that first Stockholm conference, then which was strengthened at Rio plus 20, and this is where we had Agenda 21, the blueprint for the 21st century, chapter 36 specifically on environmental education and training. And then education is broken down into different components, and from the four best practices or the 19, that have been put together. If you look at education, I think it cuts across the formal school setting, the informal side with NGOs, the capacity building, the training aspects, and then the whole networking side amongst countries, amongst regions, etc. But with education, the fundamental issue is behavior change. Yeah, that is the basic and most uh, important value where we actually change behavior. But in the process and the spectrum, we improve our knowledge, we improve our skills. And we actually had a whole education for sustainable development um, decade with our UNESCO colleagues, um, and which is now following through on some very important aspects on education for sustainable development. I must also mention in conclusion that later this year, uh, just like we had the UN Climate Summit last year, uh, this year there will be a Transforming Education Summit uh, focusing around Goal 4 of the SDGs. I think it's 19 September, but to be confirmed. Uh, and the work that you will do in the different parts of South Asia, I think will be very useful to highlight in terms of waste and how waste is so important in terms of meeting our sustainable development goals. Um, and in conclusion, I bring you back to this Secretary General report of making peace with nature, where we're looking at the different aspects of transforming nature, but how we have to be in harmony of nature, where we have looked at waste matter and chemical and waste pollution have increased tremendously, but how can we move towards net zero, especially in terms of carbon, of course, but also in terms of the management of waste, 
chemicals and pollution. And basically in terms of the of the Earth's capacities to support life, to provide resources and absorb waste matter, etc., are restored and adapted. Um, if you look at all the South Asian cities, um, especially now in Kathmandu, Nepal, where we see waste lying, municipal waste on the roads, it is a huge challenge. How we connect with the political issues is also something we should look at. And for this process, education is key. So with that, I think let me end and hand you back uh, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mahesh. Um, especially thank you for maybe um, explaining the link of waste management with the SDGs that perhaps were more directly linked. And also thank you for mentioning, I, I see various resources you have pulled up in your presentation, so that would be really great for us and the participant to maybe look over uh, yeah, once the session is done. Meanwhile, I request all the participants that you can write your questions in the comment session so you can engage with Mahesh and the other speakers. Uh, meanwhile, uh, if we, if time is allows, we will have a QA session dedicated and maybe perhaps then we can allow participants to unmute themselves and uh, ask questions directly. But meanwhile, please do use the comment or the chat session for that. Um, Mahesh, we will be listing some of the questions if you would have. Uh, meanwhile, in the chat session for you. Thank you. Um, moving on with the agenda, uh, we have our uh, key best practices for us to be shared. Uh, today we have the representative from India, Pakistan, Bhutan and Nepal uh, among from the 19 best practices that has been pre-selected. But for today, uh, we would only be focusing on four that are dedicated to South Asian context. Um, so I'll be um, introducing one by one. So I would be introducing one of the speakers and then we would be listening to their presentation and then moving toward the next and they're on. Uh, so meanwhile, please bear with us. Uh, first of all, I think uh, uh, we can take on the lead with uh, the best practices from India. We have Sakshi Sharma, uh, who is the education associate at the Waste Warrior, who would be representing Swastaki Parthashala and the Green Grokul for us today. Uh, Green Grokul is a six month uh, program that follows a training for teachers model to train educators on how to conduct interactive session and raise awareness amongst the students to bring about behavior change. Uh, meanwhile, the Swashtaki Parthashala, I'm sorry for the mispronunciation, is uh, directly engages teachers and students to interact the activities and learning session. So, see if you can take the floor and maybe perhaps, you know, let us go through this best practice. Thank you, Siza, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Sakshi, and first of all, good evening, good afternoon, namaste to everyone. Uh, I'm currently working as a project coordinator with the Waste Warrior Society, and I'll be talking mostly about the best practices, what we have like tried to implement in our education system. Uh, and just to rephrase it, it's Swashta Ki Parchala and Green Gurukul Education Program. I'll just share my screen. So as I move forward in the presentation, I'll be talking about a little bit about the organization, what we do and how we do. And then I'll talk about the best practices that is like TOT model and the capacity building programs we do with the uh, teachers, students and other beneficiaries. So uh, talking about why it's important to talk about waste right now currently. So if I talk about the Himalayan region in India, we currently, because of all tourist related activities, we generate 8.4 million metric tons of waste, especially in Himalayan region. And which is like you can see in the pictures, which is like a large, like 60% of the waste, which is scale dumping or it's just the littering around or it's just the burning part. So there is no exactly a solution about it. Uh, to just tackle that situation, there are like the country organization and people are there doing a little bit of themselves. And then our mission, which we basically focus on, it's about change behaviors, kind of a behavioral change, building the infrastructure, especially for the waste, and then strengthening the institution, which we can call about the capacity building, and then empowering the waste worker, which is really very important for us because Currently, the waste workers or the work we do in waste workers are backbone of whatever work we are do doing. So empowering them is one of our major priority. 
and we are in the northern part of india we are working currently in two state one is uttarakhand the other in other one is in himachal pradesh so if we talk about himachal pradesh we are in dharamshala and b and in uttarakhand we are in dehradun kemti uh, govind uh, reserve sanctuary which is in uttarkashi then we have a clean ganga project in rishikesh and haridwar then we are in corbett landscape also then how our operating model work is like most of our so most majority of our projects are funded under csr projects or epr projects so through that we work on zero waste management program where we just raise awareness how how things can be zero waste programs we do have our waste education program uh, in both the states where our teams are dedicatedly working with the children teacher over there then we do have our epr extended producer responsibility program so we make sure that uh, we enroll in such programs and we do a little part of it and then we the most the majority as i mentioned earlier also that waste workers are our backbone so we work on their upliftment and livelihood development we work basically with the schemes the government have schemes so that they can also get benefit of that we work on their uh, financial stability also so how the entire system work is like we have awareness and participation sessions then we have empowering rural women then we educate children we do have cleanups and transformations we do have art for tourist awareness then we have capacity building for workshop for stakeholders beneficiaries then this is kind of a model we follow that we we basically first of all focus on source segregation which is very important we make them understand why source segregation is important why it's important to actually segregate their dry waste wet waste and uh, hazardous waste and e waste but uh, why it's important then there is a waste collection system that is there we do have like in each panchayat we can say or a uh, small uh, in small area we have a storage facility which we call a waste bank where they actually collect their waste and after then it is processed over there and then send it to our mra which is material recovery facility and then if we are engaged in epr project project it's transported to the particular site if there are something other we send it to the recyclers then we work on upcycle products also because one of the source of income we think for waste worker is like they can actually utilize the waste they can generate wealth from the waste so we teach why why to consider waste as waste let's think it in a different way and think that waste can be a wealth also and then if we have recycled products we actually process the products and we like uh, raise awareness about them also and this is basically uh, we have small help groups women participating in our projects where we we raise awareness we have workshop they work on these things and it is a source of income for them also now coming to our more uh, about our education program so we have swachhta ki paatshala and green gurukul program in dehradun which is basically uh, a six month program that follow tot model so tot model is training of trainers so how it works is like first of all we we just meet principal in the school we pitch them about our program that is a six month program and then we invite them for the teachers training over there so for example if we have 10 schools uh, enrolled with us we we invite two teachers from each school and then we conduct a two day two days intensive workshops with them where there is a toolkit which is a bilingual uh, to toolkit in hindi and english also so each uh, toolkit has modules about starting from what is waste the journey of waste different kind of waste art for awareness so in those two intensive workshops it is trained that how they can execute or implement those modules in their classrooms what all things they can actually uh, practice with students so that it's easy to learn and after then uh, we have pre impact assessment then we have hands on activities with them once it's done we see what kind of a sustainable or effective waste management setup we can build it in the school then we have post impact assessment to see what kind of learning is there what is the scope of growth how much students have learned it and then we we organize a combined felicitation ceremony where we actually felicitate the students teachers principals who have actually enthusiastically participated in that and see the program under all these things so we have different components which is children teachers public all these are our beneficiaries some are our stakeholders so we we kind of a 
introduce them to the problem. We empathize about the problems. We try to find out the solution for the pro problem. We, we, we learn the experiential program where we go and do hands-on activities with them. We invite the collective solutions and then try to build the behavioral change among all the beneficiaries. So this is one of our capacity building thing where we introduce plastic gulla concept to the schools. So it, it's just a gulla concept. We basically focused on plastic gulla because uh, in most of the part of India, rural part of India, the proper waste uh, management or waste collection system is not focused. So we uh, raised awareness about why it's important to actually segregate waste and then uh, go through the proper recycling phase. So we invited them to bring plastic from their home, collect that in this uh, gulla, and once it's filled, uh, so school can coordinate with us, we'll come and we'll just empty this gulla and whatever amount or whatever the amount or way of the waste will be accordingly, we'll give them the finances. So this was generated so that they can, whatever amount they have received from this, they can further invest that in their school itself or like between eco environment club or can build up some other things which can actually inspire other people also. Then there was uh, another thing that is corn vinegar recycling. So it was mostly about, again, bringing the waste, collect the, for one month, collect the waste in your houses, bring it to school, whosoever will bring the maximum amount of waste, they will be recycling. It. Just introducing them the concept of re recycling, what, why it's important, how you, you will be getting benefit of it. Then Game of Thrones, it is mostly popular. It's about the, it's for smaller kids and it's basically about the waste segregation. What kind of waste go, goes in which dustbin? So there will be three dustbins, uh, recyclable, non-recyclable, and then biodegradable. So you have to see like there will be balls where different kind of waste will be written in it. And then you have to put right ball in right bill. So it's, it's kind of, you see the thing and then you put it in a right bin. So it's more like a experiential learning or it's more like a, you seeing what is happening. Then we, we organize cleanup drives, wall murals, just to raise awareness about the local people over there, just to make them understand why, why cleanup, why it's important to do the cleanup drive, what kind of waste goes in, all about waste segregation thing. And we have upcycling sessions, how you can create uh, wealth from the waste or how you can generate many new things from the waste and basically race is a concept where it's more about a uh, we can say game of throws but it's more about a relay race so it's you there is a competition who will we'll, uh, drop in which kind of a waste and right bin first so this is a uh, this is for elder people or young uh, like in 6 to 10 standard and then uh, like basically talking about all these things so these things help in bringing the behavioral change in the school because we believe that students are like a future of like whatever nation we are in. So it's very important to empower the students who are there. It's very important to pitch in the right information as like all the informations are taught in, uh, taught in the school. But if we talk about waste, it is if you talk about waste, uh, people won't even understand what is waste. They will think it's of no use why we are talking about it. So to generate that behavioral change, to pass on that information to other people over there and specifically just they can build a chain of people in the same process and they can build a model school in their society, same way they can aware people in their locality and do their bit of it. This is more about the Green Gurukul uh, or Swachsaki Pachala education program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sachi. This was like amazing presentation and we see a lot of pictures and smiling faces. So I'm sure the kids are having really good time and they're like really positive experiences for them to learn more about this uh, initiative. So you guys are doing amazing work. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, surely, I think you would really like to reach out further later on too. Moving on forward with our agenda, next we have um, Murad Rana, who is Environment Manager at uh, AMAL. Today he will be representing AMAL Green School program, uh, which is based in, in Pakistan. Under this program, AMAL reaches out to progressive schools and universities in public and private sector and engages them through formal MOU uh, with AMAL to introduce and implement a range of activities related to sustainability practices and principles in waste management. Uh, Murad, the floor is yours. You can unmute yourself and share the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Shida. Thank you, everyone, for inviting me. Thank you, Iswa and uh, uh, Gino 
for for connecting with all the participants so uh, hello everyone my name is murad and i'm from pakistan and i'm representing an organization uh, with the name amal in our language urdu and maybe in hindi as well amal uh, means action so we believe that we uh, actions should uh, small actions could make big differences so with this we i start my presentation uh, with a, a little bit of background about pakistan like other countries in in the south asian region we have the same problem there is a huge population and huge population results in huge amount of waste and with the lack of resources with the government uh, most of the waste uh, which is not collected by the municipalities is dumped alongside the roads and in the open areas so that's why in pakistan uh, like other uh, uh, south asian countries we are losing uh, a lot of uh, uh, dollars uh, in terms of poor health and this poor health is directly linked with uh, inadequate sanitation so according to the world bank uh, even in pakistan we are uh, inadequate sanitation is costing us like 5.7 billion dollars per year so this is the situation uh, uh, of of waste management uh, in pakistan this is these are the just two pictures which shows about how our municipalities uh, Murad, uh, if may i interrupt uh, we are not able to share uh, see your screen the one okay. you are maybe you can try resharing it Uh, can you see now? Um, no, still doesn't work for us. Uh, I guess I have. Uh, let me check again. Uh, Are you able to see now? Mm, not really, but I think we can. Some uh, the team from ours can share on your behalf. So uh, let me just figure. Okay, that would be great. Because I think I have. Okay, yeah, we can. Okay, Adlin has done it. Yeah, thank you, Adlin. Okay, so uh, uh, so basically, I was telling that there are there are two pictures in number three slide which. Basically shows how our municipalities think about the waste disposal. They just collect the waste and dump on on a one side, which we call the dumping site. And this is the picture of the dumping site in one of the biggest city in Pakistan, which is Lahore. Uh, and the the waste is dumped uh, in a huge amount, and it is coming outside the boundary wall, and leachate is coming out from this dumping site. Which is obviously uh, uh, polluting the groundwater uh, of, of Lahore. So this is the situation. With this situation, Amal was formed in 2009 as a social welfare organization, and our vision is to encourage passionate change makers who will bring out the sustainable change and through actions and generate a circular economy for sustainable livelihood of the society at large. Uh, with this vision, we developed like. Uh, two part of, of our vision. There are two parts of, of our vision. One is uh, training and educating our young generation. And second is developing a model in which the waste is being circulated. So with after detailed delibla deliberation, we developed a model which is uh, uh, displayed in the slide six. I don't know if you can see it or, or not, but uh, uh, this slide shows that uh, the different parts of our project. So there are two main parts of our project. One is called the Green Partner Network and other is called the Green Advocacy Program. So the Green Partner Network, which we call the GPN, uh, includes all the industries who are using the, uh, the recyclables uh, as a raw material for their industry. And Waste Advocacy Program is uh, is the actionable and traceable solution for our young generation to take action and uh, recycle their waste which they are generating from their houses from their schools from their offices and from their work areas and these both programs are linked through a zero waste sorting and the recycling facility which 
provides the re re uh, required raw material to the green partner network, which is received from the green advocacy program. So that's how this whole program is linked. So first, uh, our green, uh, uh, our waste advocacy program in, is focused on kids, on, on the school children. We go from school to school, uh, we, we in, engage the students in um, different kind of activities and educate them about waste sorting and how they can manage their waste at home. So our waste education program uh, and includes a, a total action plan. Uh, we include that action plan in the curriculum of the students. We give them different assignments. We uh, uh, do different challenges with them. And with those challenges, they, they, they become the participant of our program and become the green warrior. So basically what we try to do is we, we try to educate them that sort, their, sort your waste into two streams, wet waste and the dry waste. Because uh, if you know uh, 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 that in Pakistan, most of the waste come in in the commingled form. People do not have the habit to sort their waste at the source. So uh, if we try to educate them to sort their waste into five or six streams, it would be very difficult for them at this stage. So we are educating them to sort the waste into two streams. So after they, uh, they start the sorting into two streams, we tell them that what can they do with their waste. So for that, we have developed uh, a mobile application um, which is uh, a, a little video which is, is is displayed in the in the slide 12 so the people the students who use our app and do the recycling we give them special uh, 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 names like mr clean mr miss green so different schools have different uh, categories and different schools have different ranks uh, um, according to their recycling practice so if uh, uh, anyone who is playing uh, the presentation can play the video at slide 12, it gives a brief uh, about how the app works. So I, I can't hear the voice of the video, so maybe I could uh, try to play it myself. No, actually it was working. Uh, I think okay. if Shiza, can you confirm that the others could also hear? No, I'm afraid we oh. I can't. Yeah. Okay, so maybe then the comments are good then on top. But we will be sharing this presentation with our participants so they can also okay, sure, see this, sure. this video later on. So basically this app has different hours in which the people can use those hours and recycle their waste. They can send a request after uh, uh, collecting the recyclables or the dry waste at their home and our vehicle goes to their homes and their schools in their offices and collect the waste. So after collecting uh, the waste from uh, from their place, we bring it to the our zero waste recycling facility, which is uh, at slide number 13. So the zero waste recycling facility have the uh, capacity to process 50 tons of waste every day. And uh, 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 all the waste is segregated into four main different uh, types, which is recyclables, obviously paper, plastic, cardboard, etc. Then we also uh, segregate RDF, which is the packaging material, sanitary items, fabrics, which could not be re recycled. These include the multi-layered uh, uh, packaging material. We crush all it and make a homogeneous mixture and call it refuse dried fu drive fuel. And this RDF is then used in the cement industry mostly. Then uh, we have the organic waste, which goes into the compost line and then compost is sold into the market. Then the green waste, which we collect from different areas, is, uh, is, is recycled in the form of pellets, wood pellets, and these wood pellets are used as a fuel in areas where uh, uh, where gas or uh, coal or any other uh, oil is not available for uh, for as a source of heat. So 
Um, then uh, in the 14th slide, I have show you some of our green partner network. These are the industries. These are the organization organizations which are linked with us. We uh, we provide them the recyclable sorted at the at the waste sorting facility, and these uh, facilities, these organizations use it further to develop new product. So thank you. This is all from my side. Um, uh, we'll appreciate if you have any questions. You can always send us message, email, WhatsApp, any mean of communication. We uh, we are always available. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Murad, for sharing this best practice for us. And I think it is very good to see that the the, the sort of initiative is uh, linked with the green network sort of a thing that it's uh, somehow emphasis on the financial sustainability of the overall project, which we often see missing in various initiatives. So thank you uh, for that. If we have any question, we will post that in, in the chat for you. Thank you. Uh, and for our next best practices, we uh, we have Miwa Tatsuno, who is a program coordinator at IGES uh, CCET. Uh, she will be representing the ecology you know, today, which is uh, towards clean, green and beautiful Bhutan. Uh, so as the name suggests, the best practice is from Rotan per se. The booklet uh, Ecology uh, Note is designed to provide opportunities to deepen a student's understandings on sustainability waste and resource management topics, including waste prevention, recycling, composting, and pipe bars in general through employing activities such as exploring, discussing, and pre uh, presentation. Uh, Miwa, if you can, you know, let us go through this uh, whole practice of yours so that would be amazing. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you, um, Bill. Let me um, share my screen. Can you see the slide? Oh yeah, we can hear you fine and see the slide fine. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you so much for giving me a chance to present today. Um, from my side, I would like to share how the Bhutanese government, together with the key stakeholders and IGCCT, developed an educational material by reflecting some of the national policies on waste management and how the government agencies put in into the implementation at nationwide. So please let me explain our collaborative work uh, started in 2019. In Bhutan, more than 70% of its land is covered by forest and it is one of the greenest and the most unspoiled countries in Asia, which makes the country one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. But on the other hand, as you can see in the graphs, the GDP has been increasing so fast, and along with the rapid economic growth, waste generation has been also increasing. In such context, the government of Bhutan has been tackling the waste management challenges, especially through its National Environment Commission. The government designated the waste management as one of its national flagship programs, which are the most prioritized national development goals, and established the policy and legislation for environment protection and waste and in order to accelerate the proper waste management, National Waste Management Strategy and Action Plan was developed in 2019. In this strategy, behavior change and capacity development, especially targeting young generation, have been positioned as a part of the important components. Thus, as one of the implementation of the strategy and action plan, to raise the level of awareness and knowledge as the whole nation. Um, the National Environment Commission, together with IGCCT, developed an um, education tool called Ecology Node, towers a clean, green, and beautiful Bhutan. And this is the Ecology Node for Bhutan. Um, through the series of discussion with the National Environment Commission, on um, some of Bhutan's important key policies and social issues have been reflected into this booklet. Please let me introduce two examples. Firstly, um, not only the economic growth indicator, Bhutan has globally admired development philosophy called gross national happiness. 
One of the nine main goals of GNH is ecological diversity and resilience. And one of the indicators to measure the goal achievement is proper disposal of household waste. The ecology note was designed to give students an opportunity to consider how their practices on waste management can contribute to achieve the goal of GNH. Through the activities in ecology note, students look into their modern lifestyle and traditional ones and consider how the traditional lifestyle could have more advantages for preventing waste generation and leading happier and healthier life. Meanwhile, modern lifestyle brings very attractive benefits. Secondly, um, hydropower is one of the major industries in Bhutan, which produced more than 230 million US dollars in 2019. In the same year, the GDP was 2.5 billion US dollar. Thus, the industry's revenue accounts for around 9% of the GDP. And this is one of the government's financial source. However, mismanaged waste often causes the significant economic loss on this important financial source. People often litter waste and garbages into rivers including daily commodities such as toothbrushes and pens, then the waste ends up in the dumps and the large amount of such waste are accumulated and stuck to the hydropower equipment such as turbines and generators and it causes the technical breakdown of the hydropower. Once the hydropower system does not function due to the breakdown, people have to survive without electricity and more seriously, the repairing such damages cost more than 12,000 US dollars. Students learn how individuals' minor behavior like littering waste could lead to more significant consequences. Through such contents, students learn the interlinkages between their daily lives and the economic and social issues on waste. Once recognizing such issues, taking right action is the next step for students. In order to create a student's strong incentive to change their behavior, instead of just giving knowledge, the Ecology Note offers more experiential activities such as carrying out surveys, discussions, handicraft for upcycling and making compost. For example, in the list on gross, gross national happiness and ways, Children will conduct a small survey on how their classmates or family think about the modern and conventional lifestyles by making questionnaire discussions and presentations among students. After the development work, the Ecology Note was officially approved by the Environment Commission in 2020. Its launch was covered by several local media in addition, since the Queen of Bhutan has been making much effort to raise the public awareness on the waste management, especially for the young generation, this ecology note was presented to her as well. Once developed the material, the next stage was to seek how the material can be applied to the education underground. Firstly, the Environment Commission distributed this education material to all the former schools in the country. Also, considering the importance and urgency of waste management challenges in the country, Ecology Note was translated into the local language, Zonka, and not only to the former schools, but also distributed to the monastic and nunnery institutions which play very important roles as non-formal educational institutes in Bhutan. Secondly, as a responsible agency, uh, we have already, we've already crossed 10 minutes, so it would be good to wrap up quickly. Okay. Secondly, as a responsible agency on official curriculum, Royal Education Council integrated the waste management components in Ecology Note into the official science textbooks 
and curriculum at grade four to eight. The Western management can be linked with science subjects and it helps students to understand the waste issues based on scientific data and theory. Thirdly, not just giving the material to schools, aiming at the optimal use of booklets, a um, nationwide online training trainer was conducted. There are representative science teachers from all the schools in the country, which is more than 500 teachers during this training and learn how to teach the waste management topics by using the ecology node. This is how the government agencies put the material into the implementation at nationwide. One of the largest benefits um, by this government effort was that environment education often used to be conducted as extracurricular activity at schools. However, since the waste management topics were integrated into the official curriculum, these activities can be carried out within the official classes. This will make it easier for teachers to deliver waste management and environmental topics in the classes. In Bhutan, the school activities called Youth Action for Four was launched by the Queen, including source separation, cleanup activity, upcycling, advocate on preventing junk foods wrapped by plastic, and so on. Uh, so the ecology note, these kind of activities have been more widely spread. So the, um, this is the all from my side. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mila, for sharing this interesting uh, initiative uh, with us. We have also put the link to the ecology note in the chat session, so everybody can explore this on their time. Have you any question? Feel free to reach out to Mila, which uh, though it seems really interesting. So thank you for sharing this with us, Mila. Uh, moving on forward, uh, next we have our next best practice uh, presentation from Nepal. We have Faruna Thapaf, uh, uh, who is the project officer at Clean Up Nepal, who would be sharing with us. Uh, it's one of the initiative, which is namely zero waste as a schools, for Zivas and a toolkit for waste management education in Nepal. Under this program, uh, this is mainly awareness based uh, school program with the goal to empower students, teacher and school management to responsibly manage waste and engage in sustainable waste management practices. Uh, Karuna, the floor is yours. Perhaps you can uh, share your presentation with us as well. We do see that you're able to share your screen, but you have to put up the presentation as well. And also, if you can turn on your camera, if the if the internet bandwidth allows, that would be good. You may need to maybe uh, stop sharing and then try sharing again. And in the sharing option, you need to choose a different screen where your presentation is being shown. Uh, some of uh, one, any of the team member from us would be happy to share on your behalf if there is an issue. We actually don't hear you, Karuna. Mm -hmm. No, it still doesn't work. I'm happy to share her presentation, but could can anyone hear us or hear her? No, I, I don't think so. At least I'm not able to hear Karuna. Karuna, can you please check on your mic setting? Maybe it's connected to the wrong outlet. Thank you. 
Karuna, maybe you could um, leave the teams and come back. Mm -hmm. We still cannot hear you. Yeah. Maybe in the meantime we could. No, we cannot hear you, unfortunately. Shall we try to go ahead with the panel discussion and then in the meantime see how to fix the yes. mic issue? Yeah, Corona, maybe perhaps we, I mean, while we sort out the issue with the audio of yours, uh, we will proceed with our uh, next session in the agenda, which is the panel discussion. Uh, have you figured out your uh, communication issue? We will be happy to share the presentation again. Um, so thank you. Uh, moving on with the agenda, next we have panel discussion uh, to be discussed. Uh, uh, for the panel discussion, we have uh, four key representatives uh, as a panelist for, uh, for us. Uh, we have Ms. Reema Banjari from India, Ms. Maliha uh, Habib from Pakistan. Uh, we have Mr. Pardeb Amitya from Nepal and uh, Mr. Durba Kumar uh, Sarshta from Nepal. Let me allow them to in briefly introduce them as well. Uh, Ms. Reema Banjari is uh, currently head, head, heading the Eastern Region of Central Center for Environment Education, a nonprofit organization established by Government of India. Ms. Banjari has uh, two decades of experience in strategy planning and management on projects on waste management, circular economy, environment health across various cities in India and Asia Pacific. Uh, welcome, Reema. If you can briefly maybe wave to the participant, that would be amazing. Yeah, yes. thank you. Next, we have with us uh, uh, Ms. Maliha Habib, who is an independent advisor for sustainability and circular economy to academia, corporation and NGOs with the aim to close the loop on material. Maliha has extensive experience working with a range of educational institutes in the capacity of advisory, membership, engagement, fundraising, among others. Welcome, Maliha. And if you can unmute yourself and maybe also wave and just let the participant know. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next, we have Mr. Pardeep Amitya, who holds a master's degree in environmental engineering and has been involved in leading and managing a wide range of integrated urban environmental management and sanitation programs, including activities related to advisory capacity uh, from community to policy level. Mr. Pardeep has extensive experience of over 17 years, which revolves around policy dialogues, technical strategic management, uh, and program planning uh, among various others. Uh, welcome, Mr. Perdi. Hello, hello to all. Uh, namaste. Yeah, namaste. Next, we have uh, Durba Kumar Sarishta, who is a teacher at uh, Budanshala. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm uh, unable to pronounce the name of the school. Ganipanta. Okay, thank you. And he's also the coordinator of the environmental club there in uh, representing Nepal. Uh, from South Asia with us. Um, thank you, Durba, for being with here. Uh, next, we have our moderator for the panel uh, session, uh, Ms. Sawati Singh Sambil, who is uh, UN, uh, representing UN Habitat India for us today. She is associated as a waste management specialist in, with UN Habitat India, and she has worked in South Asia and Global South Asia on the development issues concerning integrated waste management and circular economy for over 11 years. Um, so, Vati, the floor is yours. Take on the lead with the panel discussion, and we are happy to have like amazing panel discussion with us Thank today. You Thank so you. Much. Thank you so much, Shiza, and I'm so looking forward uh, for the discussion. Um, thank you to all the panelists for joining in, and and to the amazing audience from different parts of South Asia. 
um, as well as uh, globally, I see a lot of uh, other participants as well. So we all know by now from the discussion that we've had that education sector, especially schools, they play a very, very crucial role in helping humanity understand how an alternative sustainable future must look like. And schools can act as living demonstration laboratories by adopting various sustainable interventions and by teaching students about environment and sustainability. Today, our focus is on waste and how education on garbage, waste or resource management that I would like to call it can change the scope in South Asia because schools can act as huge multipliers for the change we want to see on this planet. And after the amazing presentations that were made by Sakshi, Murad, uh, Miva, let's move on to this very, very interesting panel discussion where we'll hear some more success stories and what enabled them, what were the barriers and what, what we can take back from them. Um, I'll first uh, ask uh, Reema from CII India, uh, you know, if she could let all of us know that what innovative advocacy approaches uh, have, has CEE adopted to foster effective waste management in schools and the various programs that uh, CEE is leading in India around uh, education. Over to you, uh, Reema. Reema, can you unmute yourself and go ahead? Uh, Rima, you'll have to unmute yourself. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not able to hear you. No luck here. Uh, Rima, maybe if you can click on the three dots that you may be able to see, and there should be an option to unmute yourself. Right at your screen, there's a mic. And if you just click on it, I think she's not able to. Uh, so maybe at the back end, while uh, our uh, you know support staff helps Rima, I'll, I'll move to uh, maybe another panelist, uh, Maliha uh, from Pakistan. Uh, Maliha, as we all know, um, and I can see that you've done a lot of work around fundraising for waste education programs. And uh, we clearly know that fundraising is a very integral component to foster sustainable education in schools because usually there are lack of funds sometimes or some other operational issues, um, you know, especially in areas such as climate change, RE and waste management. So can you share about some fundraising initiatives that you've led? for waste education program um, in Pakistan. And I'll come back to Reema after that. Over to you, Maliha. Thank you very much, Swati. Thank you for your questions. Um, you know, one thing is, of course, you know, as we've already heard from various speakers today that education on climate change, renewable energy, especially waste segregation at source and things are very important. And when it comes to funding, it's a, um, I've actually worked with WWF Pakistan and actually using uh, green school programs to raise funds for WWF, not the other way around. So actually there's a lot of funding available from corporates, from various uh, entities that uh, can be channeled towards schools to maybe kick off some uh, environmental programs or sustainability oriented programs on schools or in various school systems. What I actually find is that um, children are our most precious resource. So they also come with a lot of, uh, you know, especially here in Pakistan, private schools are very expensive. And corporations actually use schools as a platform to, you know, uh, introduce their products to students and to young kids. And then that kind of helps to build their client base. So actually, you don't really have to worry so much about raising funds to initiate or continue waste management programs at schools, where it's more about trying to get the right kind of model for your school or for your audience. So uh, in my previous experience at WWF almost a decade ago and WWF Pakistan, I'm sure in you know, Nepal and other in India and other countries as well, does have a very strong ed environmental education component. 
But apart from that, more recently, not just in primary and secondary schools, but I'm also working with business schools and institutes at you know a university level, which are now looking at sustainability and trying to integrate that into their core curriculum. So we have an example of that here in um, Karachi, in Pakistan, where I'm based. Uh, the Karachi School of Business and Leadership, they have actually integrated uh, sustainability into their core business curriculum. So they've given the faculty training, they've made it mandatory for the full-time faculty to take training to you know, be able to link their courses. They have identified um, you know, various activities that the students can be involved in on campus and for exposure visits off campus. So there's a variety of uh, you know, uh, elements that you can do and you don't necessarily need a lot of funding for it. It's more about how you really design the program for your own school, your own requirements. Thank you so much, uh, Malia. I really like that you mentioned that it's not about the funding, but how do you reinvent the system and work towards it? Um, I'll uh, try uh, to go with Rima again. Rima, uh, are you able to unmute yourself yeah. now? Uh, I, okay, I'm, perfect. No. So, Rima, um, I'll I'll just ask the question again: that uh, what what innovative advocacy approaches? Uh, has CEE adopted to foster effective waste management in schools? And I know you have uh, countrywide programs in India. So, you know, if you could share some of those success right. stories to the audience. Over to right. you. Uh, thank you, Swati. And I really apologize. You know, I was not able to unmute uh, somehow and I rejoined. Any, uh, so, uh, just to mention, you know, CEE is a Center of Excellence in Environmental Education established in 1984. So right from 1985, we have been involved in innovative educational programs on environment and sustainable development, Pan India and Asia Pacific and some of the countries abroad like Australia and uh, US as well. Now, uh, innovative, as we say, you know, I mean, we have been rightly involved in during the policy makers, uh, policy making of the, you know, greening of the school uh, curriculum. So the National Curriculum Framework document, it talks about basically the environment as a core subject. And uh, same way, you know, taking it ahead, now we have our new education policy where, uh, uh, you know, the 4.7 SDG target is very well highlighted. And it talks about improving the quality of the education. Here where we really intervene. When we really talk about uh, sustainable development and environment, you can understand there are so many factors. And uh, the team which I am leading is mostly on waste management and education, which is uh, more on, uh, you know, providing a sustainable approach to uh, uh, education right in the beginning, you know, for the school student, for the college student, as well as to the entrepreneurs. In the innovative programs, if you see, you know, again, uh, to, uh, recently we had, uh, uh, you know, submitted a kind of set of recommendations. What kind of education in terms of, you know, uh, under the sustainable development and ESG should be there in uh, intervened and inculcated in the national education policy 2020. So uh, that was all based on our experience that we have been doing for last 35 years, Pan India. And uh, some of the innovative, like, you know, the little less campaign that uh, we are doing with FEE. Uh, we have almost 130 schools who are a part of uh, this program and uh, very innovative programs every year that they are doing and being awarded out of this. Now uh, we have a program called Urja Chetna, which is a kind of a corporate CSR program. Why I would like to highlight that it has got a very, uh, you know, innovative approach. When we talk about curriculum, you know, it's very important that we should have a set curriculum, how we are proceeding, uh, especially for the school students. Uh, when we really talk about a club approach, then how they are, you know, spreading it in the whole school approach and what they could do beyond school. So I think these three approach are the innovative curriculum that we have inculcated and uh, we have been able to have two lakh schools under our uh, entire network, uh, Pan India, who are involved in uh, waste management education apart from sustainable education. Thank you so much, uh, Rima. That's a huge network to take care of and I'm really glad to know about some of the initiatives you shared. I'll come back to you, but uh, on a similar note, can I go back to Miva? Uh, she presented uh, about the ecology note booklet from Bhutan, and um, I've happened to work uh, with uh, the Bhutan government for many, many years prior to UN Habitat. So, uh, Miva, just wanted to know that, uh, you know, uh, I mean, you did mention you are 
uh, pushing for the 4R recycling program um, and also disseminating this uh, booklet widely. But also the country has a very, very challenging terrain and I'm sure we can get some lessons for some of the hilly uh, regions uh, in South Asia. How challenging the dissemination and circulation of the ecology notebooklet was, uh, you know, when when you were under, undertaking this and how did you ensure its dissemination in remote areas and also its implementation? You talked about the 4R recycling program. So how did you ensure you were able to do it in Zonkards and, uh, you know, with, with very, very difficult uh, terrains? So if you could share that. Well, um, it may not answer your question exactly, but um, well, actually uh, the project itself was um, quite smooth because the, all the stakeholders involved in this project was very enthusiastic and very collaborative. But uh, um, I'd like to uh, touch upon some challenges uh, faced by the government and the policy implementation. Well, um, the waste management measures have not been effectively implemented, even though the responsible authorities were identified by the law and the policies. For example, uh, integrated solid waste management is not fully implemented due to the lack of fund and other factors. And also the government put the ban on plastic in 1999, but it was never enforced as it is impossible to implement at shops and markets. But at the same time, uh, Bhutan has very strong points that the government understand the importance of education and they know that the school education would function as a powerful tool for the waste education as well. But I, I'd like to uh, a bit highlight how the government put much effort and investment on education in the last few decades. Since 2000, the number of schools in the country has been increasing more than three or four times. Around 2000, there were around 600 schools, but in 2015, that increased to more than 2000 schools. Also in late 1980s, uh, the primary school's attendance was only 25%, but now it has reached almost 100%. So, uh, this is a very strong point by the government of Bhutan. And the ecology note was adopted actually in Myanmar and Cambodia as well before Bhutan. But the projects were implemented at school or city level. But in Bhutan, its implementation was at the national level. The involvement of the national agency could accelerate the implementation at the much larger scale. Yeah, that that happened in Bhutan. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that, Meva. Um, I now I now move to Nepal. Uh, we have Mr. Pradeep Bamatya with us from Kathmandu Municipality, um, and and Kathmandu Municipality has done a lot of work around the waste education program. So, Mr. Bamatya, can you share about uh, this waste education program in Nepal, and uh, the years of work that went into its conceptualization? And how did you accumulate all the learnings into a policy document? So a string of questions for you to answer. Over to you. Yes, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, waste uh, education program is uh, not new for Nepal education context because uh, we have uh, in uh, 1987, the, one of the NGOs that is uh, environmental camp for conservation awareness, ECA, was uh, it was, uh, they have established, they are the pioneer, the concept of uh, children nature club. It was in 1992, uh, quite 30 years back it was. And they have, uh, with the objectives of, uh, to promote the student in learning about uh, the improving their environment, build up a network in order to enhance the environment and uh, conservation and peace and harmony with nature also. So, they, uh, and also it is a platform that builds relationship among students, teachers, parents, school management and community. 
Then after uh, uh, some years, it was converted into eco clubs, from nature clubs to eco clubs. Now uh, eco clubs is quite popular in uh, Kathmandu, Nepal. Uh, in uh, every education, in every school, uh, there is a eco club is there, uh, so that they can they are developing some leadership, some types of things, but. Uh, this uh, th this was happening before Corona, this uh, pandemic. But now, after after onwards, it is very little bit difficulties because of uh, because uh, their, uh, their their education patterns is not transferred to the juniors school. So it is somehow lacking in our uh, uh, this school educations. So uh, uh, like uh, I have worked in uh, Lalitpur municipality, not it is nearby Kathmandu municipalities. Uh, since 2004 and working to ensure the environmental management and making a effective uh, waste management in the municipality. Yeah, so I, I found I have always emphasized and advocate for uh, segregation of waste. Uh, so uh, because this is the must, but uh, it is uh, very difficult in the case of Nepal because uh, segregation is simple job, but uh, uh, all are not is uh, aware and now we have given awareness to all, uh, but this this could not be possible unless we can change the. We we, we found that unless we cannot uh, change the behavior of community. So uh, the children are the main targets. So uh, so the in my initiation we have uh, banned plastic in a central zoo of Lalitpur. Now plastic is totally banned. Uh, there are many uh, students like a friends of zoo. The name is friends of zoo is there. So. They are quite related with nature clubs, uh, and so we thought we uh, municipality have planned like uh, Zillions are the signing stars and they are the future of community. So we have planned to pr provide environmental education in the school and improve school environment. So we made some strategy uh, to increase awareness level and better understanding on environment issues that like uh, increase uh, consciousness on health and sanitation uh, educations uh, and waste management system like uh, uh, zero waste system like I have I have published uh, th this type of books for uh, school uh, trainer. This this is guidebook for trainers. So uh, this uh, this type of uh, programs we have uh, introduced and so that people are now uh, the students also plan for some circular economy, uh, some of uh, some value in the waste like that. So this this type of uh, Patterns we have developed, and uh, now that should be that that is uh, somehow addressed in our policy level also. So like municipality have developed their, our own policy. In that also we have uh, and uh, uh, this school are uh, primary schools and some schools are on our municipality level. So we have included this type of uh, education pattern in school and in in some of the school like uh, they have. Uh, uh, I have seen one grade six school uh, curriculum. Yeah, there, there, the there is uh, mentioning mentioning uh, definition of in, uh, landfill site is uh, uh, in, uh, written that uh, it is a it is a pit of three feet and two feet, which is quite a wrong concept. So landfill and this uh, so uh, pit is different. So in that type of also we are doing advocacy. Uh, some of some some of the level in some. Some level, some education, but we are not uh, uh, decision makers and in the uh, some policy because education we have a ministry is different. But uh, in some cases, we are trying to uh, uh, encourage our school school level and some we have to we want to modify some some of the uh, this uh, curriculum uh, in, in the school level so that. People uh, such as they are the behavior change. We can like uh, there are seven steps of behavior change in this, from the school level. In, Pradeep, in uh, are, uh, thank you so much. To and then, uh, due to shortage of time, I may have to cut you and I'll come back to you uh, to give uh, other panelists a chance. Uh, I'm I really appreciate the fact that you highlighted the importance of segregation at source and um, of course the interventions you're doing are around uh, banning plastics and promoting for zero waste schools. Also, um, we have uh, distributed uh, like uh, uh, green and red buckets in each classrooms so that uh, students can start their segregation. 
Thank, Thank you. you. That's that's amazing. So on the note of zero waste schools, I would like to move to this very um, interesting uh, school. Uh, um, and, and I would uh, want Mr. Durba Kumar Shreshra to come in and share briefly about this zero waste uh, project uh, in uh, Budali Kantha School. I hope I'm pronouncing it right in Nepal. Uh, so uh, Mr. Shreshta, if you could share about uh, you know, the implementation of this project and how did you envision uh, this model and how it was established at your school? Yeah, we all want to know. Over to you. You have to unmute yourself. Can you unmute on the yourself? Top button. Yes. Um. Yes, now yes. yes. Yeah. I, I'm audible. Yes, yes, very much audible. Thank you yeah. so much, Swati Singh, and all uh, delegates from different parts of the world. Uh, really, I'm very, very happy to share uh, our experiences with uh, you in so prestigious places. Oh, you're muted again. Your, your mic just muted again. Yeah. Yes, here yeah, now you can proceed. Yes, Budan Hill Country School, it is the government designated national school of Nepal where students from all parts of the country, every new kind of corners of the country, they are studying here. And whatever we are teaching in the school or class, within very short period of time, it will be disseminated in all parts of the country. That's why it is so important. And here that many students from this different, the socio-economic background and geogra geographical regions, they are representing here. Uh, before introducing that uh, zero waste at a school program, uh, that waste management here that was not so encouraging. This school is fully residential school in which uh, more than uh, this 1,600 students and uh, their family, they are staying inside the school. It means the waste produced of this school is quite a huge amount and it is necessary to manage in proper way. That's the great threat for all of us. And fortunately, we, we keep in touch with this uh, 500B solutions, e, e swag and uh, UN habitat, habitat officials uh, to uh, this uh, manage the waste materials in our school. Here, this uh, uh, this waste materials, they mostly this uh, by volume that biodegradable ma materials are quite big enough. And uh, with the help of their technical support, we managed to make uh, this compost that is by following pit method and heat method. In addition with this vermi composting, that is quite encouraging and at the same time liquid fertilizer also we are making. And whatever this produced all organic materials, we are using to grow these materials, uh, materials as a source of main nutrients for vegetables. And the students themselves, right from the beginning, uh, that field preparation, uh, this site selection, using manure, whatsoever, look after all they are doing. And they, they are trying their level best to make more this manure from the biodegradable waste. Because if this manure is more, then ultimately their crop will get more food and their result will be very encouraging. And here all we are uh, this, uh, this connecting with academic parts. We are giving their project work and before starting, we are just orienting them how they have to start and all the records should be kept and they will uh, do as per the instruction given. And they are so curious to learn if some insect or disease attack, then they, they come, used to come to us and how we can select or like this or how we can treat or like this. Uh, now, uh, this uh, situation is uh, improving a lot. Still, we have to do uh, many things, uh, but uh, we are moving towards the betterment and we are very pleased uh, to with uh, this your support, this uh, encouragement, guidance and so on. And we are 
uh, request to you all this uh, sort of uh, support will be continued in the uh, days uh, to come also. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Shreshta. We're running short of time, but uh, some very um, interesting conversation that we had from Dreema, Maliha, uh, Mr. Pradeep and yourself. And, and I think what we really take back is that uh, it's the time to reinvent and rework and also replicate uh, yes. the different models that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, being created across South Asia on education. So I think we all must constantly share all the learnings. Uh, yes. And yeah, okay. um, I would now ask uh, Mr. Karuna, who missed uh, his presentation, uh, to come back again and present. Uh, are you are you there, Karuna? Again, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Karuna. I'll share my slide now. Yeah. Is it there now? Oh, no. We can see your screen, but not the slide yet. No? Yes. Okay. Still need to put it on the presenter mode. OK, I'm so sorry for earlier mistake. Um, hello, everyone, and namaste from Nepal. I'm Karuna Thapa. Uh, I'm currently working as a program supervisor for Zero West at schools um, at Clean Up Nepal. And uh, talking about the West uh, scenario, like um, uh, Mr. Mathe earlier said, uh, West is a very uh, serious issue. And most of uh, the schools, most of the citizens think that dumping and burning West is the right uh, solution for uh, West management, which is completely incorrect. Uh, that's why uh, Clean Up Nepal thought of uh, this initiative, Zero West at Schools, which was started in 2017. Um, it aims to um, discourage schools, students um, about the unsustainable way of managing waste and motivate them to reduce the waste that uh, they produce uh, in daily life activities and gradually take it to the minimum level with the objective of awareness, uh, improved waste management practices and positive behavioral changes in uh, among the students. Um, this service at schools program has been expanded to many other schools and currently we work with mostly government schools and community schools. So this uh, program is uh, basically based on five themes. Uh, we um, teach students about the introduc introducing about the waste and waste management system, the uh, uh, the problems relating to waste and waste management system in the context of Nepal and try to find solutions within themselves. And uh, basically we target, sorry, basically we target students of grade five to seven in each schools. And uh, we target the students of grade five to seven because uh, students at this age are very influential. It's very easy to implant the uh, idea or, or the concept of behavioral changes in these young minds. That's why we target the students of grade five to seven. Similarly, we target teachers because they are the one who are going to guide the students when we uh, leave the schools after our program is completed. That's why we conduct various thought sessions um, with the teachers and the most important our target group are staff, uh, mostly staff of uh, kitchen staff and the waste handling staff because they are the one who are handling all the waste generated at schools. So we train them about the proper waste segregation, uh, proper way of uh, composting and all. Similarly, um, at Clean Up Nepal, we believe that uh, children learn more effectively, more um, 
eff efficiently when uh, the learnings are incorporated with uh, when the learnings are combined with activity based um, games um, or hands on training. That's why each module when we teach uh, the students, we make sure that it's all activity based. Um, we conduct various workshops, we conduct various trainings, hands on training uh, so that they can learn better. Similarly, not only teaching about uh, segregation at source, we also provide them with facilities. Uh, in each school, uh, the waste are segregated in four categories, organic, recyclables, papers, and reject waste. So we have, a, we form a, a group of students, uh, very active students, which we name as environmental angels. So these uh, environmental angels group uh, always monitor the proper segregation of waste. They guide other students to segregate the waste properly. The organic waste goes to the composting site, which is handled by the uh, kitchen staff. The recyclables and papers are sold to the recycle, uh, recyclers and the money that they get from selling the recyclables is utilized by the environmental angels group and um, they conduct various activities through that money and only the reject waste is sent to the landfill site. Uh, like I said earlier, we also uh, conduct various uh, taught sessions for teachers and staff. Um, we conduct various upcycling workshops and through which uh, students go ahead and create uh, very creative um, items through the waste. Like you can see in the first picture, um, the students have created a, a playing um, seesaw out of the waste tires. And uh, this concept was completely of uh, themselves. We didn't um, give any hint about uh, the tires and all the students created themselves uh, the seesaw and they also um, made um, creative art on the waste bottles. So upcycling workshops have helped um, the students a lot. Similarly, students also go ahead and clean up their schools. They go outside the public places, they clean up all the public places and students also get involved in various activities like awareness drama cleanup activities and uh, various workshops uh, due to which we award them with the certificates at the end of the program uh, we are uh, very Karuna, glad we are running out of time so we should be wrapping up today. okay i'll just make it short um, uh, till now, we have reached 30 schools, 2,500 plus students, 132 teachers and 24 cleaning staff with very positive uh, impacts. And we have created Zero Waste at Schools Toolkit for Waste Management Education. This is completely uh, for the teachers, we, uh, which complements the school's existing curriculum to enrich children's knowledge. Uh, so teachers can guide their students about the waste management issue through this um, toolkit. Uh, we have translated this toolkit into two other languages. One is Nepali and another is Newa. So Newa language is a language of one of our ethnic uh, communities. So to reach out uh, to larger audience, we have translated this to other languages. We also have uh, created a game book. This game book is targeted for students of grade five to 10. As uh, said earlier, uh, students learn better when they are engaged in games and activities. That's why to teach them about the basic concept of waste management, uh, we have lots of games and activity works it in this game book. And we, are, we have been disseminating this game book to uh, different schools, um, where we reach, but we also try to disseminate this book to a larger uh, audience or larger um, schools that we, we are unable to reach right now. Uh, so during the pandemic, uh, during the lockdown, all the schools were closed and most of the schools uh, shifted uh, towards the online uh, teaching methodology, online platforms. That's why we also thought that 
<laughs> since we cannot reach the schools physically, we uh, made an online platform, JRVS at schools uh, website. Uh, it's you can find it in uh, education.cleanupnepal.org.np. Since we are running out of time, I'm not going to uh, make this walkthrough of this website, but this website is um, targeted for teachers and students where teachers and students can log in uh, and can find various learning relations, uh, videos, activity worksheet. Teachers can find all the taught materials uh, so that they can uh, go through the courses. And students, when complete the courses, they are also awarded with um, the certificates. Uh, so um, we heard of uh, launching this uh, during the pandemic. So we launched this on March 2021 so that students can learn while they are at home. Uh, so uh, that's all about the Zerovest at schools. If you have any queries, please feel free to ask in the chat box. Thank you Thank so you, much. Thank you, Karuna. Thank you, Karuna. And perhaps uh, you could share the link of this website on the chat and later we could submit it in the network. So uh, it's been great today to hear the perspective from uh, the South Asia and all the four countries that are of uh, Bhutan, India, Nepal and Pakistan. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we had some technical glitches and overshoot of time. Uh, since apologies for that, and thank you so much for bearing with us. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Waste Five Cities uh, program for the collaboration and support extended to us by is for local chapter from Pakistan and Nepal. Uh, before closing the session, uh, a shout out for all the panelists and speaker today. Thank you, Swati, for a wonderful moderation, and to is for IPG education team and my colleagues uh, Adeline, Shiza, Ashish, and Shio to put together uh, pull up the session. Uh, this recording will be available soon on ISWA YPG page. Uh, thank you all, and here we close the session. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.